OK, so the last thing I want to talk about is how you can, in polynomial time, solve this um, like infinite LP that has n squared variables, the y, v, w's, if n is the number of vertices in the graph, but like infinitely many constraints. And as before, in order to do that, we just need to implement a, we can do that using the ellipsoid algorithm as long as we can implement a separation oracle, one that can, uh, given some n squared numbers y, it can either check that all infinitely many of these inequalities are satisfied, in which case it's like, done, you've found y's, or it can find a violated inequality, which is to say it can find some real number c, which make this inequality fail. I claim, given these y's, there is a polynomial time algorithm that can do that task. Uh, and this polynomial time algorithm comes from linear algebra. And this STP really stands for semi-definite program. And this notion of positive semi-definite matrices is exactly what you need. So uh, a slide or two about linear algebra, some linear algebra that you may or may not have seen before in your life. So a symmetric matrix Y, capital Y, an N by N symmetric matrix, capital Y of numbers, is said to be positive semi-definite, uh, or PSD, if it has this property, that for any real vector C, you know, C transpose times Y times C is non-negative. So that's infinitely many inequalities. And if you just multiply this out in coordinates, uh, C transpose times Y times C is exactly this thing, sum over VW going from one to N of CVW, Sorry, this is a typo. This should say CV times CW. Sorry about that. Uh, sum as VW go from one to N of CV, CW times this matrix entry, YVW. Um, so again, this is like infinitely many conditions on a matrix Y for it to be positive semi-definite but there's gonna be some linear algebra to the rescue that will make it um, less confusing. So uh, matrices Y that have this property are called positive semi-definite, PSD. And luckily they're actually easy to characterize. Even though there are infinitely many constraints, there's a polynomial time algorithm, polynomial in the number of bits you need to write down Y, such that given a symmetric matrix Y of numbers, um, it either, says, yep, Y is PSD, like Y satisfies all of these inequalities simultaneously, or it finds like a counterexample. It finds an explicit, oh, I still have some typos in this slide, sorry. It finds an explicit vector C, such that C transpose YC is not greater than or equal to zero, such that it's less than zero. Okay, so it like sort of tests if a matrix is positive semi-definite, and if it's not positive semi-definite, it sort of finds a counterexample vector C that proves it. And uh, this is based on a linear algebra algorithm that, um, depending on your linear algebra background, you may have seen before. I'll just tell it to you in a proof sketch. This is not a linear algebra class per se. The algorithm is quite similar to Gaussian elimination, actually. You take this uh, Y and you kind of do Gaussian elimination, but like a symmetric form where, you know, Gaussian elimination, you try to sort of like clear out columns, like make them zeros by taking linear combinations of rows. Like in the symmetric form, like whenever you clear out like the first column of zeros, except for the diagonal entry, you also simultaneously clear out the first row and make it all zeros except for the first diagonal entry. And then you like, you know, pivot again on the second diagonal entry and you clear out this column, all zeros, and this column, all zeros. And you keep doing this. Um, and if you have a symmetric matrix to start, you can sort of symmetrically do Gaussian elimination to sort of form linear combinations of rows that like transform the matrix into a diagonal matrix. I say this if you're kind of half knowledgeable about linear algebra, maybe it'll help. The, Linear algebra term for this algorithm is Cholesky decomposition. And what you're trying to do eventually is to write Y as like this diagonal matrix, um, sort of times a lower triangular matrix on the left and its transpose an upper triangular matrix on the right. 
Okay, so there's, given a symmetric matrix, this Cholisky decomposition algorithm, which is like symmetric Gaussian elimination, actually expresses Y as L times D times L transpose, where D is diagonal and L is lower triangular. This is sometimes called like the LDU decomposition. But the point is, um, Y will be PSD if and only if, when you do this, the diagonal entries of D are non-negative. So it's a fact that if you succeed in doing this and all the D entries are non-negative, then the original matrix Y is PSD. And it's also a fact that if you fail, like you come up, as you're doing this, you get some diagonal entry that's negative, you can easily extract from the algorithm a vector C such that C transpose YC is less than zero. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into it further than that, but if you do a little linear algebra practice and maybe it'll be on homework, um, this proves to be true. And this is also a polynomial time algorithm because it's like Gaussian elimination. It's like an n cubed time algorithm for doing this. Uh, there's a question. Can we use eigen decomposition instead? Great question. Um, so it's a fact that if you have a symmetric matrix, another linear algebra fact is that if you have a symmetric matrix, it has all real eigenvalues. And another way to define PSD, positive semi-definite, is to ask, uh, or is to say that all these real eigenvalues are non-negative. That turns out to be equivalent. So you might ask, oh great, so given a symmetric Y, I'll just compute its eigenvalues, and if they're all non-negative, I say, great, it's PSD. And in fact, if you find an eigenvector with a negative eigenvalue, then that eigenvector will actually be this C that has C transpose YC less than zero. In principle, that works, but actually it's, there's numeric problems because um, there's not really a polynomial time algorithm for exactly computing eigenvalues, right? These not even, don't even have to be rational eigenvalues. So like you have to get into like, ooh, what if like the eigenvalue is some like negative irrational number that's like super close to zero? Can I like tell whether it's zero or just like slightly negative, but like maybe has like doubly exponentially many zeros after the decimal point? Um, you get into some weird issues like that. So this is actually, as far as I know, the only truly polynomial time way to test if a matrix is PSD. But intuitively, you can say like, yes, compute the eigenvalues, and if they're all non-negative, it's PSD. Great question. So this can actually be used, this algorithm can be used as the polynomial time separation oracle, right? Because it exactly, given some explicit numbers for y, which are symmetric, it'll either say, good job, uh, ellipsoid algorithm, you found some y's that satisfy all the infinitely many constraints, such that y is PSD. Otherwise, it actually finds you an inequality. This is a linear inequality in the entries y because this is like sum of CV, CW times YVW expression, um, that's violated. So this is really takes advantage of the fact that the Lipsoid algorithm really only needs to run, you know, a polynomial number of variables and the ability to find separating hyperplanes when you think of a point that is not satisfying all the constraints. And so uh, it's a fact of life that even forgetting this L, uh, max cut thing, you can use the ellipsoid algorithm to efficiently solve any quote unquote semi-definite program, where a semi-definite program is like a linear program over variables that are arranged in a matrix together with the constraint that the variables in arranged in a matrix form a PSD matrix. There's a little asterisk here, which I'll talk about, but there's another question here. Question was, for these exponential or infinite sized LPs with separating oracles, how do we know what value of little r or big R we should give to the ellipsoid algorithm? I guess since the, the number of bits to describe this K theoretically is infinite because it has infinitely, infinitely many constraints. Superb question, it exactly gets into this footnote. Um, for these semi-definite programs where you like take an LP plus you put in like these infinitely many constraints, all the stuff that we said about uh, without loss of generality in a linear program, this capital R with poly many bits and this little r with poly many bits exist, and you can throw in the big box constraints, etc. Those are no longer true. Tech this is a very technical point, but they're no longer true when you have a semi-definite program. And so there's two uh, consequences. One, 
you cannot do this semi-definite programming at all unless you explicitly have big box constraints. You can't just say like, oh, since I have you know, a, an LP, I can put in big box constraints without loss of generality. In the, PL, in the STP case, the semi-definite programming case, it's no longer without loss of generality. So you have to explicitly put them in. However, for many applications, that's perfectly fine. Like in this MaxCut application, we know that all these little y's we're looking for are supposed to be bounded between minus one and one. So we happily put these in, that y, all the y vw's are between minus one and one, and then you know, our big R can be one. It's also true that we cannot, when we have these infinitely many constraints, we cannot have any little r that works. As a consequence, the ellipsoid algorithm can't like, keep going until like, some finite time and then be like, oops, I know it's either empty or it's not empty. And so that goes into this footnote. You can really not literally solve these STPs. You can only solve them to additive accuracy epsilon in polylog one over epsilon time. But you know, it's usually fine to solve your STPs up to this numerical accuracy. So um, this is like mostly a highly technical uh, footnote. So I'll leave it at that. Um, so just real briefly, uh, why, if you succeed, does this imply that the matrix Y is positive semi-definite? Well, let me just put everything out there. It's because if Y is really expressible as L, D, L transpose, then for any vector C, if you look at C transpose Y, C, it's C transpose L, D, L transpose C. If also the diagonal entries are non-negative, then they have square roots. So you can write D as square root D times square root D, which is the diagonal matrix with the square root of the diagonal entries on the diagonal entries. And so now you can write this, see now this part here is the transpose of this part here. And so this C transpose YC is equal to this vector times its transpose, which means it's equal to this, it's equal to the squared length of the vector which is always non-negative. So this proves that if Y really can be written like L, D, L transpose, where the diagonal entries are non-negative, then it is PSD. And in fact, if you manage to do this, you get this L, D, L transpose representation, you can write it like this. And now this matrix, root D, L transpose, is an upper triangular matrix. This matrix is a, its transpose a lower diagonal matrix. And so we see that if you have a symmetric matrix Y, it can be written as Y equals U transpose U for some matrix U. I mean, because these L's and D's exist. And conversely, by this proof that's still written down here, if you ever write Y as some matrix U transpose times U, then this proof uh, starting from here goes through and you conclude that Y is PSD. So it's another basic linear algebra fact that a symmetric matrix Y is PSD if and only if it can be written as U transpose U for some matrix U. In fact, this matrix U doesn't even have to be upper triangular. It doesn't even have to be square. There either always will be a U which is both upper triangular and square, which uh, you know, satisfies Y equals U transpose U. But conversely, this proof doesn't need uh, U to be upper triangular or square. Um, you know, there should be like, this will be UC transpose and this will be U transpose C. So that's why this proposition is true. And so it means if you have a symmetric uh, positive definite matrix Y, you can write it as U transpose U. And if you think of the rows of, oh, sorry, if you think of the columns of U as vectors, and the transpose has these same vectors as rows. And what it means is that the IJ entry of y, little y ij, is the dot product of the ith u vector with the jth u vector. So finally, and this is my last slide here, um, it's also basic linear algebra proposition that whenever you have a positive semi-definite matrix capital Y, um, its entries can be expressed as ui dot uj, like the ijth entry, sorry, there exists some vectors u1 through un, such that yij equals ui dot uj. And actually, this is super similar to the moment condition. Remember, the moment condition that we were trying to capture with PSD-ness was that the, there are real numbers u1 through un. We call them x1 through xn, but there are real numbers u1 through un, such that yij equals ui times uj. And we replace this moment condition with this 
relaxed version, this PSD condition. And the PSD condition is equivalent to saying that there are vectors u1 through un, such that ui.uj equals yij. And so next time, uh, what we're going to see is how we can solve the MaxCut SDP we've cooked up, get these vectors, and then round, quote unquote, round these vectors to integer values to get good max cut solutions. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, if there are any quick questions, I'll answer them now. Otherwise, I'll stop the recording and then I'll answer non-quick questions. So feel free to hang on after I stop the recording and ask any questions you may have.